Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today's Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Today I'm going to recap last night's Eastern Conference Finals Game 4. Look ahead to tonight's Western Conference Finals Game 4 in the NBA. We'll go over yesterday's two Stanley Cup playoff games. Look ahead to tonight's Stanley Cup playoff games. Major League Baseball, WNBA. We'll talk some primaries, news and notes, and best bet. All right, we'll start in the NBA. Eastern Conference Finals Game 4. Celtics come out on top by a score of 102 to 82. They even this baby up at two apiece. Celtics had to win the game. They did it. And now it's a best of three. Jason Tatum had 31 points to lead the way for Boston. And Victor Oladipo led Miami in scoring with 23. Amazingly enough. And now tonight we have game four between the Warriors and the Mavericks. Golden State with the chance to close out to go and go to their sixth finals in the last eight years, which is an amazing accomplishment of itself. The two years they didn't go to the finals were the bubble finals, which they were really, really bad that regular season. and They weren't even invited to the bubble. And last season, in which they lost in the play-in tournament to John Morant and the Grizzlies, and in the prior five years, which was all under Steve Kerr there in the finals, obviously four of them against LeBron and the Cavaliers, one against Kawhi and the Raptors in which they lost. And they lost one to LeBron too. And then uh, now potentially this year, assuming that they uh, win this series. Um, but then anyway, um, the Mavs I have is a projected half-point favorite here. Total of 214 and 1720ths. And here we have Dallas by one total, 215 and a half. Um, the question is under or um, Golden State. Um, and I'm going to go with a slight under in this game. I just think that um, defenses will step up. Um, but that could be completely wrong here and the Mavs can hit a bunch of threes and blow out Golden State, similar to what Memphis did in Game 5. But I do think that Dallas will force a Game 5 on their home court, and Luka and company will avoid getting swept. So picking Dallas to win the game, but the podcast pick is going to be a slight under. All right, now I'm going to move on to the Stanley Cup playoffs. We had two games last night. I'll go over both of them, and... We'll look ahead to two very important game fours tonight. Lightning over the Panthers 2 0 to complete the sweep of the President's Trophy winners. The number three started game with 24 saves on 25 shots. Sergei Bravovsky, number two, started the game with a goal. Pat Maroon, number one, started the game with 49 saves on 49 shots. Andre Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky is the reason why. Tampa's on to the conference finals. He was the best player in both those games. Lightning were outplayed in both home games, and they won. And now they're on to the conference finals with a lot of rest, and they haven't even played their best yet. And that is not a good sign for the uh, Carolina Rangers series winner. And Florida, meanwhile, massive disappointment to get swept. In the second round, you won the President's Trophy, and you got swept. Like, that is not a great look. Um, when I did the uh, power rankings, the uh, judging the season power rankings, um, to me, the Panthers had to go to the conference finals this year because of the number of times they had great, such great regular seasons, including this year. And they go and lose in the second round. Granted, to the team that won the last two Stanley Cups, which makes it a little less painful on the surface, but it's a bad one if you're uh, Florida, for sure. Avalanche over the Blues, 6-3 to three, to take a 3-1 series lead. The number three started the game with a goal and assist. Pavel Buchnevich, number two, started the game with two goals. David Perron, number one, started the game with a hat trick and an assist. Nazem Kadri. And this game was 4-3 after it was 4-1, so give the Blues credit for uh, fighting back a little bit here. But 
ultimately, um, the loss of Jordan Binghamton, I don't think, is um, strong enough to uh, overcome if you're the Blues, unfortunately. So Colorado caught one of the another lucky break here in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The second series in a row where the opposing goaltender gets hurt. So I think Colorado's kind of lucky that they're a win away from the conference finals. All right, now we have two games tonight, 7 o'clock on ESPN. You have the Hurricanes and the Rangers from Madison Square Garden. The Rangers are slight favorites here, which is weird. Carolina's minus 104, over under 5.5, overs plus 116, others minus 142. Carolina plus 1.5 is minus 265, Rangers minus 1.5 is plus 215. The fact that the Rangers are favored here tells you something. I'm taking the Rangers on the money line to even up the series. Vegas believes in them. I believe in them at home. Um, I don't believe them on them on the road because Carolina is so dominant at home. But I want to look at game two and see or game three and who was favored in that game. Uh, Carolina was minus one hundred five, so the Rangers were probably slight favorites in that game. Or you could argue it was a pick em. So, um, it said Kane's minus 105. So, really, it was um, uh, the Rangers' a slight favorite, just like here. So, I, I like the Rangers tonight to even up this baby at two apiece to make it a best of three. And they have the best player in the ice in uh, Igor Shesterkin. And a 9-3 on ESPN, you have the Flames and the Oilers. Game 4, Oilers are the 2-1 series lead. They're actually a home favorite. It's minus 114. Calgary's minus 105 over on their 6.5. Over is minus 106. Under is minus 114. Calgary plus 1.5 is minus 660. Edmonton minus 1.5 is plus 210. Um, in Game 3 of the series, um, Edmonton was actually a slight home favorite, too. Um. I'm picking Calgary to even up the series, though. Um, Calgary's a good team. They're the better goaltender. I think that Markstrom will bounce back. Um, I don't trust Mike Smith. I Calgary can absolutely win a game in Edmonton, so give me the Flames at minus 105 to even this baby at two of a piece to make it a best of three. Now I'll move on to Major League Baseball. We'll go over... The results from yesterday and look ahead to a busy day today in Major League Baseball. Pirates over the Rockies 2-1. Cubs over Reds 7-4. Orioles over the Yankees 6-4. Dodgers over the Nationals 10-1. Phillies over the Braves 7-3. Twins over the Tigers 5-4. Cardinals over the Blue Jays 7-3. 10 on a walk-off grand slam by Paul Goldschmidt. Guardians over the Astros 6-1. D-backs over the Royals 9-5. Pods over the Brewers, 2-3-10 to three and 10 on a walk-off single by Jose Azokar. Mariners over to A's, 7-6, and the Mets over the Giants, 13-3. Now we look ahead to tonight's games. 6-30 at the Rockies and the Pirates. You have Kyle Freeland and Ronte Contreras. Um... Why isn't that game posted on FanDuel? It should be. I'm going to see if DraftKings has this game. Because I have an idea if it's the right idea. They took it down for some reason. But if Colorado is favored, I'm taking Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh is given a 59.9% chance to win, according to ESPN Analytics. So, I think the Pirates will win this game. So, if this matchup comes up later when I'm back looking for best bet, then I'll get back to it. Um, Cubs-Reds. Marcus Stroman and Tyler Maley. Reds minus 116, Cubs minus 102, over under 8.5, overs minus 106, unders minus 114, Cubs minus 1.5 is plus 168, Reds plus 1.5 is minus 205. Um, ooh, the Reds are larger Vegas favorites than um, ESPN analytic favorites. 
I don't know if I feel good about Marcus Stroman. I like the over in this game. Eight over eight and a half at minus one hundred six. Marlins Rays. Pablo Lopez and Shane McClanahan. Rays minus one seventy two. Marlins plus one forty four. Over under six and a half. Overs minus one hundred five. Unders minus one fifteen. Marlins plus one half is minus one sixty four. Rays minus one half is plus one thirty six. I love the over. One of these bullpens is going to implode. Seven o'clock Orioles Yankees. Bruce Zimmerman and Jordan Montgomery. Yanks minus two sixty. Orioles plus two fifteen. Over under eight and a half. Overs minus one hundred two. Unders minus one twenty. Orioles plus one half is plus one five. Yankees minus one half is minus one twenty six. I'm going with the over. Um, I don't feel super about it because a lot of the Yankees starters have COVID right now, meaning like regular position player starters. So they're down three starters, but the Orioles still stink. It was fluky that the Orioles won that game yesterday. So give me the over. Dodgers Nationals, Walker Buehler and Josiah Gray. So Josiah Gray against this former team. Dodgers minus 210, Nats plus 176, over under 8.5, overs minus 104, unders minus 118. Dodgers minus 1.5 is minus 128, Nats plus 1.5 is plus 106. Tough one. Um, the Dodgers should know Josiah Gray and how he pitches, so that would be a fun like little subplot. I'm going over first half total runs, over 4.5 plus 104. Phillies, Braves at 7.20. Kyle Gibson and Max Freed. Braves minus 164. Phillies plus 138. Over under 8. Overs minus 108. Unders minus 112. Phillies plus 1 half is minus 152. Braves minus 1 half is plus 126. I'm going to go with the Braves first half result at minus 115. Tigers twins at 730. Bayou Brisky and Sonny Gray. Twins minus 245, Tigers 2 to 1, over under 8, overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Tigers plus 1 half is minus 102, Twins minus 1 half is minus 118. Um, For this game, I'm going to go with the Twins first half run line, minus 1 half and plus 108. I know that didn't work for me with the Yankees yesterday, but I'm going to try it with the Twins. 745, Blue Jays Cardinals, Kevin Gossman and Jordan Hicks. Blue Jays minus 138, Cardinals plus 118, over under 7.5, over minus 118, under minus, or no, it's minus 110 each way, my bad. Blue Jays minus 1.5 is plus 115, Cards plus 1.5 is minus 138. Um, Cardinals at plus 118 at 47.6% chance to win is pretty good, so I'm taking that, um. Kevin Gossman just gets favoritism in the market for some reason. I know his numbers are good, but um, I don't know. That's just weird to me. Um, 8 o'clock, Red Sox, White Sox. Red Sox low-key turning their season around. They're only 3 under 500 now. Um, Dylan Cease and Nick Paveda, so big series for both of these teams. Um, White Sox minus 172, Boston plus 144, over under 7F, overs minus 114, others minus 106. Red Sox plus 1F is minus 154. White Sox minus 1F is plus 128. I like the over. Um, Nick Mavada is not very good. Dylan Cease is good, but um, I don't know if I trust the White Sox bullpen enough. So I like the over. Uh, Guardians Astros. Zach Plesek and Framber Valdez. Astros minus 215. Indians, I'm sorry, Guardians plus 180. Over under 8. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. Guardians plus 1F is minus 125. Astros minus 1F is plus 104. Um, tough one. I am going to go with the, hmm, uh, all the numbers I like are not great. So I'm just going to go full game under 8, minus 108, but I don't feel strong about it. 9.30, Rangers-Angels. Dane Dunning and Noah Syndergaard. Angels minus 164, Rangers plus 138, over under 8, minus 10 each way. 
Rangers plus one half is minus one fifty four. Angels minus one half is plus one twenty eight. I like the over. Um. Royals D backs, Jonathan Heasley and Zach Gallen. Um. D backs minus two ten. Royals plus one seventy six. Over under eight. Overs minus one eighteen. Others minus one hundred four. Royals plus one half is minus one eleven. D backs minus one half is minus one hundred eight. I don't trust the D backs enough. To be favored by this much. I'm taking KC plus the one and a half at minus 111. Next up is Brewers Padres on TBS. Nice game for the TBS package. Uh, Corbin Burns and Blake Snell. Brewers minus 134. Padres plus 114. Over under six and a half. Overs minus 115. Unders minus 105. Brewers minus one half is plus one forty. Padres plus one half is minus one seventy. I like the over. I could see the uh, the Padre bullpen giving up some runs here. A's Mariners. James Caprellian and George Kirby. Mariners minus one fifty six. A's plus one thirty two. Over under seven. Overs minus one fourteen. Unders minus one oh six. A's plus one half is minus one seventy. Mariners minus one half is plus one forty. I like the over. I just don't trust either of these teams' bullpens. And then the Mets and the Giants. Giants have fallen off. They're only three over 500 now. Chris Bassett and Logan Webb. Giants minus 124. Mets plus 106. Over under 7. Overs minus 105. Unders minus 115. Mets plus 1.5 is minus 196. Giants minus 1.5 is plus 164. I'm going to go with the under in this game. I just don't think the Mets are going to go off like they did last night. I think Logan Webb will pitch well, as will Chris Bassett. So I like... The under in that one. All right, now we'll move on to the WNBA. We'll recap the action from yesterday and look ahead to tonight's games. Only had one game last night, Commissioner's Cup game. Aces killed the Sparks 104-76. to Vegas is 7-1. LA is 2-5. Aja Wilson, 24 points to lead Vegas. And Kennedy Carter had 17 for the Sparks. Now I look ahead to tonight's slate. Four games. Seven o'clock. You have the Wings and the Sun. That's a good game. The Wings are four and two. The Sun are four and one. Um, I would assume that Connecticut's favored in this game, and they're probably favored by a good margin. We're gonna see here. Um. Yeah, they're eight and a half point favorite. Souls one fifty eight and a half. Um. I'm going to take Dallas in the points because I just don't think the Wings are that bad. So I think it's going to be a closer game than people expect. So give me the Wings. Commissioner's Cup game. Dream Mystics. The Mystics are favorite 8.5. Totals 160 and a half. Um, the Dream's 4-2. and two, The Mystics are 5-2. and two. I'm going to go with Dallas plus the 8.5 at minus 106. 8 o'clock, Commissioner's Cup, the Fever in the Sky. Fever 2 and 6, the Sky are 3 and 2. Chicago Series by 13 and a half, totals 164 and a half. Give me Indiana and the points. Um, that's just um, too high of a point spread. And then the Lynx hosting the Liberty. Liberty 1 and 4, the Lynx are 1 and 6. The Lynx are fair by 5 and a half, totals 162 and a half. Give me the Liberty and the points. I think they might win out right there a little over two to one as an underdog. But the Lynx being one and six shouldn't be that much of a favorite. So give me the Liberty plus the five and a half at minus one oh two. All right. Now I'm gonna talk some primary elections. There's a couple important ones to look out for tonight. A couple gubernatorials. Um and some Senate stuff. There's eleven big ones to watch. So Alabama, you have U.S. Senate, 5th Congressional District Governor and Secretary of State. In Arkansas, you have U.S. Senate and Governor. Texas, 15th, 28th, and 30th Congressional Districts and Attorney General. And in Minnesota, you have the 1st Congressional District. We're going to start with Alabama. Um, and their gubernatorial election. Um, so Kay Ivey, who's currently their governor, is eligible for re-election. 
Um, and obviously, uh, she's, um, in the running. And her competitors, Linda Blankard, former U.S. ambassador to the Senate and former candidate for Senate in 2022. Lou Burnett, president of Women and Youth Shelter in King's Home in Chelsea. Stacey Lee George, corrections officer, former Morgan County commissioner and candidate for governor in the last two gubernatorial elections. Kay Ivey, who's the incumbent governor of Alabama. Tim James, businessman and son of former Governor Fob James and candidate for governor in 2002 and 2010. Donald Trent Jones, a yoga instructor. Dean Odell, pastor, author, founder, and dean of a ministry school. Dave Thomas, mayor of Springville and former state representative from 94 to 02. And Dean Young, a businessman and perennial candidate. Kay Ivey is going to win this. I just don't see how she loses. Um, there's some interesting uh, candidates in the primary, but Ivy should prevail here. Um, to the Democratic side, um, now this is what's up for grabs here. You have Yolanda Rochelle Flowers, an activist and retired rehabilitation specialist and educator. Arthur Kennedy, an Army veteran and educator. Chad Chig Martin, small business owner and musician and independent candidate for governor in 2018 as he switched. Patricia Salter Jameson, nurse and licensed minister. Malika Sanders Fortier, attorney and state senator from the 23rd district. And Doug Smith, developmental economist and retired corporate attorney and perennial candidate. I want to say Sanders Fortier wins this one. Um, She's currently um, a state senator from the 23rd district. That certainly helps her cause. I would be somewhat surprised if she did it win. So I'm going to say uh, Sanders Fortier wins the uh, Democratic side here for um, Alabama. Now we'll do Alabama's Secretary of State. Um, Republican side, we have Wes Allen, member of the Atlanta House of Representatives, Chris... Horn, activist and candidate for Alabama House of Reps in 2014. Ed Packard, election administrator in the Alabama Secretary of State Office. And Jim Ziegler, Alabama State Auditor. Um, so the incumbent is John Morrill, and he's term limited. So I'm going to go... Um, hmm, this is a tough one. I'm going to go with Wes Allen based on his resume... And he's pretty well known in the state. So I don't feel strong about it. And in the Democrat, you only have one. And that is uh, Pamela Lafayette, correction surgeon and candidate for Alabama State Board of Education. She has no competition. So she's going to probably run away with this one. And now the Alabama Senate. Um. Right now, your leader in the Republican side is Clay Schofield, and the Democrat side is Bobby Singleton on the other side. Um, so we have some results and some that still need to be determined. Um, so District 1, District 2, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 17, um, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 27, 28, 29, 31, 33 need to be elected. And the rest have been elected thus far. And then the House selections for Alabama. Your leader on the Republican side is Mac McCutcheon. And on the Democratic side, it's Anthony Daniels. And the one to watch here is the 5th Congressional District. Now we'll move on to Arkansas. They have the gubernatorial. Um, Asa Hutchinson is the incumbent and um, cannot seek re-election. So um, he's out. So Republican, you have two candidates. You have Sarah Huckabee Sanders, former White House press secretary and daughter of former Governor Mike Huckabee. So that's interesting. 
And then Francis Doc Washburn, who's a radio personality. Um, I think Huckabee will win because she has the ties to her father, who used to be the governor of Arkansas. So that is a cool subplot. So I'm going to go with Huckabee Sanders to, uh, to win this primary. And on the Democratic side, you have Anthony Bland, a public school teacher, nominee for lieutenant governor in 2018. Chris Jones, former executive director of the Arkansas Regional Innovation Hub. James Ross Russell, small business owner. Sufa, exact process, May, entrepreneur. And Jay Martin, lawyer and former majority leader of the Arkansas House of Rep. I'm going to say Jay Martin wins this one because um, he used to be in charge of the uh, House of Reps and... I think he's well-known in that state. So I'm going to go with Jay Martin for Arkansas Democratic side. And then also we have Senate and um, Arkansas as well. Um, so you have a leader right now, Jimmy Hickey Jr. on the Republican side and Keith Ingram on the Democratic side. Um, in the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 14th, 15th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 24th, 30th, 31st, 33rd, 35th for um, elected senators. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets elected in here with Arkansas. So Texas, you have 15th, 28th, and 30th congressional districts and attorney general. Their gubernatorial Primaries are over. It's going to be Greg Abbott against Beto O'Rourke for governor. Um, Abbott, you knew, is um, going to win this. Um, he had 66.48% of the vote. Um, Alan B. West had 12.26%. Don Huffney's had 11.98%. Chad Prather had 3.8%. Ricky Lynn Perry had 314 Candy K. Horn, 1.21. Paul Ballou, 0.58. And Danny Harrison, 0.55. And then Beta O'Rourke um, ran away with this one. Um, went 100% of the vote and 91.41% of the vote. Joy Diaz had 3.13. Michael Cooper, 3.04. Rich Wakeland, 1.23. And Anasenio Bernitez, 1.2. So some other important elections going on in Texas, including the Texas Attorney General election. Um, the incumbent, Ken Paxson, is term limited. Um, Republican primary candidates um, advancing to the runoff, George P. Bush, Commissioner of the Texas General Land Office, and Ken Paxton who is um, the incumbent, but, oh, he's not term limited. So I missed on that one. And then the eliminated in the primary was Lou Gommert, who is the U.S. representative for Texas's first congressional district, and Eva Guzman, the former justice of the Supreme Court of Texas. And then on the Democrat side, um, advancing to the runoff, you have Rochelle Garza, former attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union, and Joe Jaworski, attorney, meditator, former mayor of Gableston and grandson of former U.S. Department of Justice Special Counsel Leon Jaworski. And eliminated in the primaries, Mike Fields, attorney and former judge of the Harris County Criminal Court at Law Number 14. Lee Merritt, civil rights attorney. And S. T. Bone Rayner, who is also an attorney. Um, I think that the... Winner is going to be Jaworski because of the uh, connection to Leon and he was a mayor. So I'm going to say uh, Jaworski. And on the Republican side, I think that Ken Paxton will advance and rerun for election. And for the uh, 15th Congressional District for Texas... Um, in the Democratic Party, um, 
the right to go up against Monica De La Cruz. Um, so you've declared you have um, Ruben Ramirez, Army vet, Tyrell turning candidate for the seat in 2016, and Mc- Michelle Villagilo, who's a businesswoman. And then elect, eliminated in the primary, Eliza Alvarado, former employee of the U.S. Department of Labor, Julio Garza is an activist, John Rigney, attorney, and Vanessa Trigina, a nurse. Um, I'm going to say Ramirez because he was a candidate for his spot in 2016. I think that uh, people will recognize the name here. And then for 28, that's another big one here to keep an eye on in Texas. Um, so it is Jessica Cineros. For the Democratic side, attorney and candidate for the seat in 2020. And Henry Seuler, incumbent U.S. representative. Um, And then eliminating the primary was Tanya Benvidez, who's a teacher. I'm going to say that uh, Seuler um, will end up uh, getting the renomination. He's the uh, incumbent, so I think uh, Seuler will come through. And then, on the Republican side, you have Cassie Garcia, former congressional aide, and Sandra Whitten, Sunday school teacher, nominated for the seat in 2020. Um, eliminated primary, Ed Cabrera, businessman, and rancher Stephen Fowler, combat veteran. Eric Holman, management analyst. Lily Vasquez, NG, NG, former police detective. And Ronaldo Rodriguez, who's an activist. Um. I'm going to say that Witten wins this one. Uh, she was a nominee for the seat in 2020. That will certainly help her cause. And then the 30th uh, district, important too. Um, the incumbent is Eddie Bernice Johnson. Um, she um, will not seek re-election after her next term. So she's out. Uh, so the Democratic Party, you have... Jasmine Cochran, state rep from District 100, and Jane Hope Hamilton, former chef of staff for U.S. Rep. Mark V.C. So I'm going to say Crockett wins that one. And then on the Republican side, um, you have James Harris, who's a retiree, against James Rogers, who's a recruiter. Um, So... I'm going to say that Harris, based on the uh, the primary votes, will get through. And then the last one that we have to talk about is Minnesota 1st Congressional District. So, that's a big one, obviously. Um, So the Republican side, you have declared um, Matt Benda, agricultural law attorney, John Berman, electronic hardware designer and test engineer and candidate for U.S. Senate in Minnesota and Kansas in 2020. Jennifer Cardahan, former chair of the Minnesota Republican Party and Haig Dorn's widow. Bob Carney Jr., panel candidate. Brad Finstan, former Minnesota director of the USDA Rural Development and former state rep. Nails Pearson, state rep. Roger Ungamak, engineer and business analyst. J.R. Ewing, general manager of a biofuels plant. And Kevin Kokina, former member of the U.S. Marine Corps. Tough one. There's a lot of uh, interesting nominees here. But I'm going to go with Berman. Um because he's been a candidate for Senate in the past. Um, I don't feel strong about it. But I'm going to go with Berman here. Um, to win this uh, Republican primary. And then the Democratic Farmer Labor primary. Um, you have Richard DeVoe, who's a Red Wing bookseller. Richard Painter. Um, he's a University of Minnesota Law School professor. Former White House ethics lawyer under President George W. Bush. And candidate for U.S. Senate in 2018. Sarah Barkabil Hawk, um, she was a um, 
MPhil candidate for Cambridge University and former business owner and direct voter contact and former student president. George H. Callbearer, CEO and president of the Callbearer Financial Management. Jeffrey Edinger, American corporate and executive and former CEO of Hormel Foods. James Rainwater, attorney of a medication firm. Warren Lee Anderson, retiree of retail. And Candace Deal Bartell, founder of the Cultivate Mankato and founding board member of the Cultivate MN Early Childhood Education Advocate and Teacher. Um, I'm going to go with Painter here. Um, he worked under uh, George W. Bush and uh, ran for Senate four years ago. So I'm going to go with Richard Painter here to, to win the uh, this primary. So that's it for primaries. Now we'll move on to news and notes. Um, it took a little bit while with the primaries because there's a lot of them to get to. News and notes, on the other hand... Not a lot. Um, so, um, Josh Donaldson suspended one game for calling Tim Anderson Jackie in reference to Jackie Robinson. I think that was ridiculous that he got suspended for one game for calling him Jackie. Like, this is just frustrating, and it shows to, uh, what this society, this society has become. So I thought that suspension was ridiculous. And now he has COVID on top of that. So um, that's just unfortunate um, for Donaldson. Um, as the league calls it, inappropriate co- uh, comments. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo um, open to an extension as they are flexible to find the best situation amid trade rumors. So that's interesting. Um, Travis Etienne fully cleared as he is back on the field for OTAs after missing his rookie season due to a Liz Frank injury. Debo Scaniel skipping 49ers OTAs. Not surprising. Um, Cardinals to be on hard knocks in November. Um... They feel like a hard knocks team to me, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, big basketball news from yesterday. Uh, Nuggets president Tim Connolly agrees to a five-year, $40 million deal with ownership equity to become the Wolves president of basketball operations. Um, this is a gigantic move in the NBA. It can't go overlooked. It's a big gap for Minnesota and just a tremendous loss for Denver. So I'm interested to see what direction these two teams go in with this move. Lakers still on Doc Rivers as they completely, um, hasn't completely abandoned hope that Rivers becomes available this offseason. Former Super Bowl champion and Pro Bowler David Deal was hired by the Memphis Tigers as an offensive analyst. That's interesting. Um... Marcus Smart and Tyler Harrow missed last night's game against, or I should say, last night's game four, and Rob Williams came back. Um, Penguins GM Ron Hextall says he'd like to keep Chris Letang and Evgeny Malkin in Pittsburgh for the rest of their careers. We'll see if they get that done. Last but not least, my best bet. Of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, there's not that many that I personally loved today. Um, I did not win best bet yesterday as I had the over 207.5 between the Heat and the Celtics. That game had a total of 184 points, so that was a big fat loser. Um, so it's a tough one for me. Oh, uh, and yeah. By the way, Pittsburgh's favor minus one twelve. Colorado's minus one four over under eight. Overs minus one four under it's minus one eighteen. Rocks minus one half is plus one sixty. Pirates plus one half is minus ninety four for a game pick. I'm gonna lay the minus one twelve in Pittsburgh, but that's not gonna be best bet. Best bet here. Um, I. Don't feel strong about it, but I kind of like the over in the Cub Red game. Um, neither of these pitchers have been spectacular this year, right? So I'm gonna go 
with over 8.5 at minus 102. And I'll lay a unit on it between the Reds and the Cubs for my best bet of the day. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything going on today. Look ahead to everything tomorrow. Survivor finale tomorrow. And then obviously news and notes and best bet for you as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.